Hey guys, it's Tom Cherry Holmes here with the Fujinet Project, and I wanted to record a little video, another in the series of playing games on Fujinet. These are games that you can take and mount on your Atari today if you have a Fujinet. In fact, if you want to play along, go ahead. Tonight we're going to be looking through Scramble and some of its clones. Scramble is a horizontal shooting game in which you are typically a ship traversing through caverns, shooting at various enemies that are shooting back at you, taking care not to uh, run into the cavern walls or to hit the bullets of any enemies that might be shooting at you. Uh, you also have, typically in Scramble, you have a limited amount of fuel that you have to replenish by taking and shooting at various fuel tanks, and certain things that you shoot at can have other bonus values. So with that, let's go ahead and uh, kind of move on to our first little game here. Now you'll see that I have seven games lined up here. These are all loaded into various device slots. This is all done so that I can take and push the disk swap button and move on to the next game with Sam giving a helpful little voiceover as he does it. So with that, let's move on to our first one. Tapping the option key, we'll start with Airstrike from the English software company. We have right here Airstrike written by SA Writing, published by the English software company in 1982. This is a fairly straight down the middle scramble clone, but with an interesting gameplay dynamic that you'll see here in just a moment. I don't know if this particular gameplay dynamic really adds that much in terms of variety uh, or challenge to the game, but perhaps you can be the judge. If we take and do nothing here, it'll just sit here until we take and press the start key again to start the game. It can be a little jarring, but oh well, there we go. Now, you can see right here as I move forward or backward, the scroll time will increase or decrease. Uh, and I seem to have accidentally set player 2 mode here. So let's just go ahead and die. Yes. No problem. Did I accidentally? Yeah, alright. Skill level. Player 1. So this gives you the opportunity to take and select players and skill levels. So we'll start at skill level 1. You have 5 that you can choose from. It looks like to start from. And let's go! And you can see right here, pixel perfect collision detection can make traversing these various bits of terrain a bit of a challenge. Now you'll notice that some of the boxes that you shot at are F for fuel, but also A for ammo. And this basically also implies that you have a limited amount of ammo. So you can't just be shooting willy nilly. I'll try it one more time. And for whatever reason, and I do apologize ahead of time, uh, with my capture hardware here, it seems to have uh, an interesting time trying to take and capture the audio from some of these games. Some of them are very quiet, and some of them are not so quiet. I apologize ahead of time. I'm going to try to use one of my other machines to do capturing for this in the future, albeit probably with lesser video quality. You can see that the you can basically see that the uh, slowing up and speeding down aspect of the game can make it a little bit awkward. So let's move on. Yes, go. Thank you, Sam. And we will move on to its sequel.
And you can see right here, yeah, full theme song and everything. But if we hit uh, the start key, you can see the same dynamic where it's asking for the number of players that we want to be able to play with, as well as skill levels. But you have the opportunity to see here that in addition to the main screen in the middle, you also have a sort of large screen panoramic view on the bottom to see the entire level. Which is, I think, is a nice touch. You can see that the smooth scrolling is definitely improved in this game, too. Ouch. But ultimately, the awkwardness of dealing with both the jarring effects of the speeding up and slowing down aspect and the jarring effect of the scrolling can make this particular version of Scramble a bit difficult to play, but I think an okay attempt, especially if you can have the patience to deal with some of the more idiosyncratic parts of the game. Let's see here, one more guy. And I think he understood that the game was a bit difficult to play because this version gives you five guys to start out with instead of three. Hmm. So there you go, Airstrike 2. Thank you, Sam. And now we're on to Caverns of Mars 2. This is the sequel to Caverns of Mars, also written by Craig Christensen. Uh, but unlike the first game, it was not officially picked up as a commercial title by Atari. Instead, it was uh, distributed by APX solely, like the original run of Caverns of Mars. All in all, it's okay, though. Um, but unlike Caverns of Mars, where Caverns of Mars basically took the scramble gameplay mechanic and flipped it on its side, inverting it downward into a cavern, this game plays very much like a straightforward clone of Scramble, as you'll see here. Overall, uh, very nice, just very, very nice, uh, smooth scrolling. I mean, I it, very, it's a, it's very nice. The the enemies move along quite nicely, smooth as butter. And if I had any particular critique of this particular game, it would be that the first four zones of this particular game are extremely easy, and the difficulty ramps up very quickly at the end. There is no limit on the number of bullets that you can shoot, so yes, you can just fire away. And here we see the first appearance of the uh, roving little saucer guys that you see in Scramble, but here they're basically done as, I don't know, uh, bouncing rocks? As you can see here, everything in nice, neat little rows, uh, all the way up to uh, the first four zones. It makes the game a bit easy. And like most of these scramble clones, uh, the collision detection latches are used to detect collisions with uh, from the player to various parts of the playfield and enemy ships, etc. So uh, the slightest little breathe wrong, and yes, you find yourself exploding. Isn't 80s fix it, physics wonderful? Collision detect, you know, collision latches for the win and all that. So. Ooh. 
we're getting into the fourth phase here. Whoop. Why did I do that? I ask myself that question a lot. Why do I do anything? Moving down and up. I'm going to just let that fuel tank go. And that guy's not going to go. Well, yeah, he is. Okay, never mind. So now we actually are getting into phase four here very shortly. Ah! Darn it. I want to try to get to the end here so that I can show you some diagonal moves that you absolutely have to do. As you start to get into some of the craggier parts of the caverns, you will have to use diagonal moves to take and get through them. Now, I'm going to play this through one more time to try to get here so that I can show you how this works. Oop. Seems like I've collect crashed, but no problem. I can just reset there and we'll try again. Boom. So again, first parts of the game, really easy. Everything in a nice straight line, it's real easy to take and shoot things and get and get all of those initial points racked up. Keep, keep going, keep going. Yeah, here we go. bouncing rocks and the thing to really catch about most of these scramble clones it's mostly about pattern memorization knowing which missiles are going to shoot and when so that you can avoid them easily whoop and not doing stupid stuff like that I'm going to be very conservative here and not try to fly down into every nook and cranny because I want to get to the end of the game here so that you got so that you guys can see how this works. I'm not going to do it, am I? This game has it in for me. And you'll see here that knowing when to push forward and when to push back on all these scramble clones is important because you are moving along at a constant speed. This is absolutely important. Uh, anger increasing. Let's try it again. This time. And now I'm gonna push down. Oop, I'm fast running out of fuel. Gotta get some fuel. And now I'm going into the craggy caverns and this is gonna be interesting. <sighs> I'm not even to the, to the interesting part yet. Come on. Okay, not going to happen. But the trick with the last, the last zone is to use the diagonal motion, lower left or lower, you know, you know, lower left or upper left, as you're constantly scrolling along to take and move yourself into the tight corners. They look impossible, but they're not. You have to master the diagonal corners. So all in all, I mean, Caverns of Mars 2, it's an okay version of Scramble. 
Moving on. Thank you, Sam. We're going to play Dawn Raider. And as we can see here, uh, most definitely uh, a PAL game. The music is playing much too fast, but the game should play fine. And this actually looks like a, a decent version of Super Cobra. I hadn't played this before. <laughs> Just nicely done. I mean, good use of the multicolored antic characters. The fuel burns at an accelerated rate, but I guess that's fine. But this is a nice feature. Uh, when you take and come back into a potentially contentious area, you get the opportunity to take and position yourself to anywhere within two thirds of the screen view here to the place where you know you want to be. For example, to put ourselves in front of that fuel tank that we can just shoot. And lest you think that that's a good idea, right there, it just taught you a very important lesson. This particular game has fires, especially as you shoot the fuel, which you have to avoid. Ah, I like that. It's not bad. Let me try that one more time. The first part of this looks like a weird little nod to, uh, to Airstrike, actually. Like somebody looked and saw Airstrike and went, I can do better than that. Again, avoid the fuel tanks. A few avoid the ammo tanks. Wow, I had to hit that one several times. Holy crap. All in all though, this looks very nice. Very nice use of the multicolored antic characters character set. And the, the enemies move along quite nicely. They smooth quite you know, smoothly, most of them anyway. Ah, interesting barriers here. Scoot through, very nice. All in all, I mean, I, I really did. I think this is a nice surprise. And I really like this feature a lot. The ability to take and move yourself into a nice safe area, which is not always where you think it might need to be. <laughs> really? Wow. Come on. Zoop. There we go. All in all, though. Okay. I give this one a good solid B, I think. Not bad. Move on to the next one. Thank you, Sam. And now we are at Sea Dragon. Sea Dragon is an excellent uh, reinterpretation of the Scramble gameplay here. It was originally written by Wayne Westmoreland for the uh, TRS-80 uh, series of machines, Model One, Model Three. Uh, kind of, you know, you know, and those machines are you know black and white machines with uh, block graphics. And even with that, the game was executed extremely well there. Uh, since, uh, you, know, you know, Russ Wetmore was Adventure International's uh, number one programmer for, you know, like his, their A-list programmer there, he was tasked with porting Sea Dragon to the Atari 8-bit, and he did so with his characteristic flair. Uh, the graphics are very much kind of reminiscent of Preppy that in that uh, they, they are minimal and they do the job. And, of course, this ever-present love for big, chunky font characters. So, with that, we'll take and uh, play the game here. Now, 
uh, interesting thing about this particular game is that you can set, of course, different skill levels, but you also have the ability to set one or two players. But And this is something I always liked about Russ Wetmore's games. You had the opportunity to set whether or not you had, if you only had one joystick, you could still do two players without having to take and swap over to the other port by saying that you only had one stick. And I always thought that was a nice little touch. So with that, let's start the game. The game soundtrack, very minimal, and I like it. Sonar, just a very simple sonar. The ship itself moves with a little bit of a drag, and I think that's understandable considering that you're a submarine pushing through water. You can go up above the water for a moment to get more air, and this is absolutely important uh, air management is critical to winning this game, especially in the later parts of the game because you will be inside the different caverns. And by the time you get to the dragon, which is the not really the boss at the end of the game, but the goal, you will not have seen air for some time. Now, you'll notice here that I'm hitting these mines, and these mines have to be hit uh, at the ends. They can't, you can't hit them at their sticks, nothing will happen. Mooka terrain, uh, whoa. Whoa. That was close. Again, the trick with these games is memorizing when these various enemies will try to attack you. And knowing when to push forward and when to pull back. come up and get some air for a moment. Yep, somebody's gonna, yep. Now that may have been a mistake. Okay, now we get down into the cavern. And you'll notice that when you get down to the cavern, you don't, uh, the, the opportunities from which you to get air become fewer and fewer. So you really have to take and time them well. And I suppose this is not a good time to tell you guys that I'm not really very good at playing these games. But I do enjoy playing them nonetheless. Here we go. And again, like some of the others, you have to be very careful at knowing when to take and use diagonal movement to get through the caverns. But, yeah. Okay, so I'd give this one a nice solid A. This is definitely worth playing and definitely worth taking and exploring. A very, uh, just an excellent game overall. Let's move on. Thank you, Sam. On to Super Cobra, which is by many considered to be the sequel to Super Cobra, to uh, Scramble. Was also done by Konami. And interestingly enough, um, was the version that was ported by Parker Brothers to a variety of different systems, including the Atari 8-bit. I find it very interesting that Scramble itself was not ported or licensed by anybody to be ported. Go figure. So now we are playing Scramble and you are, instead of a ship, you're a helicopter. You can see the scrolling action is quite nice. 
very fast paced, very smooth, and just done very well. It's the enemies aren't too fast, but it gives you a good uh, opportunity to take and really get into the mechanics of the game. It plays very well. Uh oh, I'm out of I'm out of fuel. Now, as you clear the individual checkpoints here, you get a replenishment of fuel, which is a bit of a difference from scramble itself. So you don't you're not relying entirely on just having to shoot fuel tanks at the right time. And since, you know, here we go, next major checkpoint. More caverns. Ouch. Right up the rudder. Right up the rotor. So here we go. Now we have these flying jellyfish weird things. I don't know what these are, but they're just a pain in the butt. And I got hit by a tank. Wah, wah. More, more sky jellyfish. Next checkpoint. I'm actually doing pretty good with this one. So overall, I mean, it's it's a very it's, it's a really nice game. I like this one a lot. I really have to wonder though I you know what are the logistics seriously of getting all those tanks and various enemies into those caverns how many millions of dollars does it take to actually pull this off it's a thought I have in my mind all the time and I have a fear it will never be resolved oh yeah nice thing about Super Copra is it has a continue feature I like that too all good let's move on To our final game here, which is a port or a uh, yeah an implementation of Scramble, but not by Konami, by uh, Paul Lay, who goes under the name Playsoft, and his compatriot Harvey Kong Ten, who did the graphics, and it is absolutely sublime. You will love it. It's absolutely amazing to think that this is all literally being pulled off with multicolored mode for Antic. And the nice thing too, if you have a joystick such as a uh, Genesis gamepad or whatnot that has uh, more than one button, uh, the second button actually functions as your bomb button. <laughs> it's quite nice. You have some game options here, everything pretty much straight down the middle, normal. Uh, you know, and you can even have auto fire if you want, and you can set trigger one to be something else entirely. 
number of lives, etc. Scroll being normal. Let's continue. Here we go. And as you can see, as I push the other button, you can push both buttons at the same time and not have to worry about being at a particular height or at a particular distance to take and fire different missiles and things. It's quite nice. I mean, it's excellently done. I mean, this is absolutely amazing. Truly, look at this. They did such an amazing job. And the, the terrain matches the arcade quite nicely. Uh, the patterns for the enemies match up enough. So if you're familiar with the arcade game, they map up, they match up quite nicely. Uh, everything is nice and smooth. Uh, star background, quite nice. Kind of semi-parallax going on here. And it's just, I'm, I'm impressed. This is a really good indication of what could have been done if the programmers didn't have the world's tightest time schedules to produce a game. So we'll take and end the video basically by playing this game out. You can see as we approach 10,000 points, every 10,000 points we get another life. And auto fire is a nice touch, especially with us older players and our um, various forms of carpal tunnel that we've all seemed to succumb to. <laughs> all in all, I mean, just absolutely excellent. So there we go. I mean, look at that. Excellent games all around. Uh, we've, uh, we've gone through seven different games, all ranging from what I would consider to be something of a C average to some very good A-plus games, all of which you can play on your FujiNet right now. I'll be making more of these particular videos in the future showing more collections of games together that you can take and immediately take and boot up on your FujiNet simply by taking and mounting them in your TNFS host slots. But until then, guys, have fun.